as we continue this holiday season here on December 27th, 2022, it's kind of hard not to look at the calendar and think that the end of the year is only four days away. And that means thinking about the goals that you achieved or didn't in this year. And you might be the kind of person who likes to set goals for the new year and what that looks like. Well, for many mid-career job seekers, this can be a blessing and a curse. This year has certainly had its moments from continuing the great resignation to having more open jobs than job seekers. But whatever your career situation is, you are going to write another career chapter in 2023. Maybe it's a new job. It's a new destination, a promotion, or opportunity for you. But whatever that is, I'm going to share with you one thing in this episode that you must do to strategically position yourself in 2023 so you can find that new job and create your next advancement opportunity. Welcome to episode 137 of the Mid-Career GPS Podcast. I'm your host, John Narrell. I'm here to help you find a job you love or love the job you have by using my proven four-step formula. I hope you are continuing to have a wonderful holiday season. You might be noticing that my voice is a little bit raspy. Well, I uh, got COVID for the second time in 2022. We actually had to change all of our holiday plans from seeing family and friends, and we're going to just push Christmas and the holidays back a few weeks into 2023 and see everybody when we're all feeling a whole lot much better but I'm going to challenge a lot of my vocal training in this episode so it doesn't sound too raspy. But uh, for a very, very good friend of mine who is also a huge Golden Girls fan, we often joke that when my voice gets like this, I sound like Brenda Vaccaro. She was Big Sally on the Golden Girls. She played Phil's wife. And uh, if you don't know Brenda Vaccaro and her whole acting history, she's certainly had a wonderful career, but it has this kind of raspy and gravelly voice. So I'm, I've am i got some tea and some water here with me. I'm going to try not to cough too much during this episode, but I am really glad you are here because we are going to talk about consistency today and what that means for you in your career path and in your job search. Well, speaking of consistency, this is the last episode for season two in 2022. If you haven't had a chance to go back and listen to the last three best of episodes, I certainly hope you will take some time to go back and do it. They are shorter episodes. I showcased 24 of my guests with some of their best tips and advice on everything from career clarity, networking, interviewing, taking care of yourself. I certainly hope you will go back and take a listen to those because the feedback on them was really good, but it was also more importantly, it was just fun to go back and revisit those episodes and pull them together. And for people who hadn't heard the episode, uh, all of those guest episodes have gotten some significant downloads by going back and listening to them. So you can always go back and find the episode in the show notes of that best of episode if you want to go back and listen to the whole conversation. So the other thing I do want to tell you about is we're just keeping a little bit of housekeeping here. If you are considering leveling up your career in 2023, I don't want you to make a mistake while you are doing it. Now, yes, we know mistakes help us learn and everything else, but I know there are five mistakes mid-career professionals make, and admittedly, y'all need to stop doing them. So I created a free guide for you. It is on my website at johnnerrell.com. You can link up to it in the show notes or just go to johnnerrell.com. You'll see that free guide there called Five Mistakes Mid-Career Professionals Make and Need to Stop Doing. Download the guide, get some perspective and thoughts and see whether or not you are doing any of those things and what you might need to do to course correct as you build your mid-career GPS. For today's episode, I want to talk to you about the power of consistency. And it's one of these things that a lot of job seekers often overlook because they are so focused on the outcome. 
if you're actively job seeking, you're thinking that the end result is you getting that new job. And that's great. And that can happen through a variety of ways and a a variety of means. But the fact of the matter is you truthfully do not know how long it is going to take for you to create that job. And I say create that job because we know there are things you need to do along the way to make that job offer come to fruition. It's your resume, your LinkedIn, how you network, who you connect with, how you interview. There are all of these things that you are doing that are putting you strategically first and foremost in the eyes of the hiring manager, the interview panel, that they're ultimately going to go ahead and offer you the job. Consistency is key. If you talk to any professional athlete, they will talk about how they train. There is consistency in their training. Now, when I work with my clients one-on-one, we do build in what breaks look like in your job search. And admittedly, this is a great time of the year to take a break. And if you've ever heard the phrase, slow down to speed up, this is a prime example of that. Maybe you are taking some time this week to get ready for your performance appraisal, or you're getting your resume together, or you're updating your LinkedIn a little bit. Whatever it is that you're doing, you're essentially slowing down to start speeding up because once you hit the gas and you go toward whatever destination it is for you to have that new job, you are going to play full out and you will do that because you are consistent. Consistency was one of those things where I have to say has been a huge theme throughout my career. One of the things, I don't think I've really shared this too much on the podcast, but when I was a teenager, my job in high school was as the church organist in my town. And admittedly, I was good. Good to the point where my Saturdays were spent playing at a 9 a.m. funeral, 11 a.m. funeral, 1 o'clock wedding, 3 o'clock wedding, 5.30 mass. And I made a heck of a lot of money as a 13, 14-year-old and then continued that through high school. I will never forget that I showed up for a lesson one time. I hadn't practiced. I thought I could wing it. And my teacher... It's named Father Alphonse Stevenson, an amazing musician um, who also happened to be the conductor for the original run of A Chorus Line on Broadway. He got so angry at me that I hadn't practiced. And he said, you've got to be consistent. You have to practice on a regular basis. And we learn to define what consistency looks like based on all of the other circumstances we had. But it became a part of my routine that when I got off the bus from high school on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, I got off the bus, I walked to the church, I got the key from the rectory, I went into the choir loft, I practiced for 60 to 90 minutes a day, I went home, I ate dinner, I did my homework, I started the whole thing over again. The only reason why I didn't practice on Wednesdays for a good chunk of the year was that those were the days we had our bowling matches. And that was the one sport I played in high school. You find a way to make it work because you build in systems of consistency. And being consistent is exactly what you and I have here right now. So I have spent time over the last few weeks getting ready for season three. And I went back and I took a look at the data. And I want to share this with you because there's a huge story in this that ultimately is going to lead me to thanking you for being part of this ride with me. When I decided to launch the Mid-Career GPS podcast in January of 21, I was fully committed to doing it for a full year. And that year, I was going to drop an episode every Tuesday. And on the second and fourth Fridays of every month, I was going to drop an additional episode. I dropped 79 episodes in 2021 
for a total of 4,721 downloads. Now, vanity metrics are what they are, but it is a measure. It gave me a baseline and it allowed me to goal set because I said, okay, when I started planning for year two, I didn't want to drop six episodes a month. I had surveyed my listeners through my email community, which by the way, when you download that guide, five mistakes mid-career professionals make and need to stop doing, you automatically come into my email community and you get updates on special events and different weekly leadership and career topics. Don't spam, but I have a really, really good open rate. So it tells me people like my email uh, newsletter as well. But I surveyed them, they gave me some feedback, and I said, you know what? I am not going to burn myself out with this podcast. I'm gonna drop one episode a week on Tuesdays, and I will at some point do a mini series, which was that interview series I did in August where I did six mini episodes for a week. So this year, I dropped 57 new episodes consistently every week, to over 11,000 unique downloads this year. My goal is to consistently serve you through this podcast. And trust me, there was part of me that wasn't sure I was going to get this episode out. Because when I started not feeling well, I thought, oh, how am I going to go ahead and do this episode? Thankfully, I had it planned out. I had my notes. I had everything lined up where basically all I needed to do was come into my office, turn on the microphone and record. Thankfully, there is no video today because I don't look really good. Um, And I'm just going to go ahead and get this episode out to you because my goal is to consistently serve you. And in doing that, in showing up every single week, you know, that on Tuesdays, there's a new episode of this podcast. I am truly grateful for you for listening and the outreach that you have provided. By the way, all of this is organic outreach. I ran one small little ad last year that really didn't do anything for a total of like $70. So here's what I know. My consistency resulted in me publishing 28% fewer episodes And having over a 240% increase in downloads for the year. When you get strategic in what you know works and doesn't, you move toward what works. This is what happens when you're searching for jobs. You find something that works, you get traction and momentum, and you move in that direction. It's like when you're on a highway and you're traveling and the sign up ahead says, um, accident, right two lanes blocked. You don't sit in those right two lanes until you come up onto the blockage. You start moving left. So you will, one, stay away from the accident, and two, you will hopefully have a quicker route through the traffic jam. These are the things about being strategic. And I work with people and we build their job search and their marketing and their networking strategy that is very different for everybody. What works for someone doesn't work for somebody else. Someone's timeline may not be the same as somebody else. What I'm offering you on this podcast is first and foremost, Think about how consistent you are. If you've been looking for a job, how consistently are you looking and applying for those positions? And I admittedly here, it can be very easy to sit here and say, well, you know, I'm in a very specialized field. Uh, There's not a lot of jobs that are posted. As one of my coaches says to me, excuses are like armpits. They both stink. This is not a time for you to be making excuses. You need to be thinking about your results and what are the things you need to do to achieve those results. I had a goal this year to get a 200% increase in my downloads. I got 240%. 
How did I do that? Because I looked at what was working and I consistently showed up to do that. So here are the things that happen behind the scene. So I know that in order to get a single episode out like this, typically takes me about three hours of my time every week. I know that when I have a guest and there's a preliminary conversation, there's the actual recording, there might be a little bit more editing involved and getting those out typically runs around five to six hours a week. And these are things that admittedly right now, I do all by myself. I do that for some very specific reasons. One in part, because I'm trying to minimize costs in my business. I get solicited by podcast editors and people all the time. It is not something I'm entertaining at this point. Down the road, yes. Right now, no. But I have to plan for those three to six hours every week. I email my uh, leadership and career newsletter every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. Takes time to do that. I have a LinkedIn newsletter that consistently comes out on Wednesdays right around noonish. I don't automate that. So that means I've got to go into LinkedIn and load it in and and hit publish and everything. I'm at 68 newsletters. Every single week this year, I've done a newsletter. What that does is that people start to know where to find you. Consistency is key. So what I do in my business works for me. There are other coaches and service providers out there that do things that specifically work for them. But being consistent when you have a goal in mind, such as finding a new job, getting a promotion, having the necessary conversations around your professional development, you must show up consistently to do that. That's part of your brand. It is partly why and how people get to know you because there's an expectation, there's dependability. Look, I'm not kidding myself that if I didn't drop this episode tomorrow, that, you know, not a lot of people would notice. I'm just going to say it. I mean, a few of you or my faithful listeners might be, huh, I wonder what happened, right? I'm not kidding myself here. And I absolutely want to drive home the point that if I wasn't feeling well and I didn't feel I could sit in front of this mic and get this episode out here, I would not do it. We must put ourselves first. But when we put ourselves first and we evaluate, is this possible? And yeah, I can go ahead and do this. I don't have anything else planned the rest of the day. I'm going to catch up on some TV and watch some YouTube and rest and relax the rest of the day, that's fine. It's all built in. But I am not going to miss this deadline because being consistent is important to me. I have clients who work out very, very faithfully. And I admire them so much for that because it is it is a non-negotiable for them, that they know at 5, 5.30 in the morning, they are at the gym, they're doing their workout, they're running, whatever that is. They are doing that for them because they are consistent with that. And consistency doesn't have to mean you're doing it every day. Consistency is about building a repeated behavior over time. Building a repeated behavior over time. If you landed a new job this year, I want you to just take a moment and just celebrate that. Whether it was a job with a new company, an internal promotion, whether you had been unemployed for a while and found new work, whatever that is, I want you to take a moment to celebrate that because it is about being brave and vulnerable and authentic and putting yourself out there and hearing a lot of no's perhaps before you hear a yes. But I am willing to bet your consistent actions and the evaluation of the results that you created is what got you that new job. Whether you found it through job boards or networking, you had a connection, whatever it is, you did it. And I am taking this moment right here to celebrate that with you. If you haven't found a new job yet, don't give up hope. 
right? While hope is not a strategy, don't give up hope is simply that you have to believe that it's coming. And this is a great time for you to evaluate what your consistency is and how to assess your results. So I want to take a point here to mention a wonderful new podcast from one of my clients who I am super excited and thrilled that she got this podcast launched last month. Um, Her name is Coach Alethea Felton. Uh, Alethea is the host of the Power Transformation Podcast and I believe it's episode seven. She did this episode on overconsumption. I want you to go on your platform. I want you to follow her podcast. Take a listen to this episode on overconsumption. If you are questioning your results, if you are wondering what is getting in the way, Alethea points out that there are things that might be pulling you away that you are consuming that is not serving you. So it can be video games. It can be scrolling on social media. It could be spending too much time consuming content. Whatever those things are, if that is not serving you, that is an opportunity. And look, it is fair enough to say we all overconsume something or some things. It's a matter of whether or not that is serving you. And as Alethea points out in her episode, and I'm going to reiterate, there is no judgment here in any of that. I just want to put a spotlight on this point here, which is if you are not getting the results you want, if something is blocking you from achieving those things that are most important to you, Give yourself the space and the grace to figure out exactly what that block is and how you want to work through it. Whoever that person is to help you, or you do it on your own, whatever that may be, but look at your actions that produce your results. I have said over and over and over again on this podcast that through my coach training, I believe that our results are created based on a thought that in turn creates a feeling, that produces a specific action, that in turn creates a result. When we're not being consistent, right? I wasn't really consistent with my food intake during the holidays, in part because I'm not feeling really well. Sometimes I just want to have a bowl of pasta with some butter, not really on the diet plan, but you know, sometimes you want what you want. I realize that's not part of the plan But I'm going to also give myself a little space and grace here with that because I'm going to be better the next time I go to sit down and eat something. Einstein's definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you're telling yourself, I can't find a new job, do something different. If you're telling yourself that no one wants to hire you, change the thought. If you're telling yourself that your company doesn't see you as a valuable, talented, experienced professional, and they are not going to promote you for whatever reason they have, maybe you need to look elsewhere. In my career, One of my biggest mistakes I have made was hoping that my leadership and my management would make a different choice. They'd be different. They'd change their mind. When you realize that the org chart is not going to open up for you, and you have had all of the necessary conversations you have needed to have, you have to decide, are you willing to stay, whether it be because of the golden handcuffs, or you are going to stay because you need the structure and consistency of that job, and there are other things going on in your life right now where you don't have the time, effort, and energy to to do a job search? Whatever that is, 
You have to decide. And what you decide based on that thought creates those feelings, which create those actions that in turn produce those results. My training looks at our energy from a very specific thought, emotion, and action. I don't think of energy as being very woo-woo and ethereal. When I coach my clients, we do it from a very scientifically based approach in how to help them move toward getting the results that they want. So what does it mean for you to get your results in 2023? What do you need to change? What do you need to be more consistent about? And how are you going to go about doing that? But what I want to offer you is that new years, just like new days, are fantastic opportunities for you to do something different than you've done. It's going to take courage and bravery and guts and vulnerability. And there's going to be moments of extreme highs and maybe some lows. But that is what growth is about. That is what is about building your mid-career GPS toward whatever is next. And as I have been planning the next three months of this podcast, I am excited to bring you the conversations and the topics that are all going to help you get clearer about what it is that you want and are looking for in your career and how to help you get there. Because my friends, in 2023, you and I are going to play bigger and bolder and more prominently than we have ever done before. I am honored and grateful that you put me in your ears every single week. And we are along for this ride together. So let's make it happen. It is time to start building your mid-career GPS one mile or one step at a time. And together, we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. So I wish you a very happy and safe and healthy new year. Take time to cherish those memories and build them with your loved ones, your family, your friends. Take some time for you over these next few days to celebrate all that you've done. Celebrate and recognize the things that you have been consistent about and that you want to be more consistent about in the future. You are worth it. You deserve it. You are special. You have so much to offer, and it is time to stop feeling undervalued and underutilized and feeling stuck because we're going to get you unstuck this year and next year. And I am excited for you to be along the ride with me. My friends, Happy New Year. All the best. Thank you for two wonderful years of the Mid Career GPS podcast. I'll see you next week as we kick off season three. Happy New Year. All the best to you. Take care.